Today we are riding. What's up everyone? Today it is Dakar training, or it feels like it. These are some of the fastest trails out there and re-watching them while I'm watching the Dakar rally really makes me appreciate how much faster the pros go than me. We're probably going like 80k an hour here and those guys go like 140, 150 on completely new track. They've never been on it before. Some of it's in the complete wild. It's honestly crazy. This though is what is Camp Hughes or Spruce Woods Provincial Forest. Super good track here. Lots of different trails, a variety of open wide, and then some more technical stuff, which you got to keep a little bit secret because otherwise the quarters find out and they'll tear that trail completely up. Ahead of me, just around the, every corner, is Adam. He's on that Beta 300, which just flies. Whoa. There we go. Yeah, this is good riding. This section always reminds me of Endor and those speeder bikes on Star Wars. You kind of flying through it. Here we go, a bit of off camber, and then there's a route which bucks me out. Whoa. Okay. So we're still on the KX250. Still a fantastic bike. In times like this, it feels perfect. And it would be nice to know what something else felt like. It'd be nice to easier test ride things, you know? We got Brandon joined up with us now, and he's on the KTM 200. So I got a couple two strokes ahead of me, and that 254 stroke I'm on been like a little damp so the leaves have a little slickness to it as you go around these corners and being that this is just open trails there can be guys coming from both directions and more importantly the quarters and side by sides take up the whole track so there's no way to get around them we have had a few incidents in the past with those today we're just going to head out to what we call our enduro training section we've been building a track over the past few years in secret, um, finding some good valleys, some steep, some good up and downs essentially, and keeping it tight and technical while all hiding it again from the quads because if they find those uphill sections, there's a sand hill they will get to which gets completely chewed up. Everything about three inches down just turns to pure sand. Trees down everywhere. Big winds out this past few weeks and it's uh, been fun to go as fast as you can without dying. This section's fun. Let's go. Coming through a sand corner. Here we go. You just hammer it and power on, power slide around, go through, and then we come up to like whoops. These are all natural whoops, so it, it, if you hit them fast, it's just like the races where you just skip across them all. And then if you hit them slow, it is the worst, bumpiest ride ever. We'll just do a little corner here, and uh, that's where they really start. Right now, we're still in a pretty flowy section. Yeah, Dakar, crazy stuff. I mean, they're on bigger bikes, heavier bikes. Here come the whoops. Much bigger bikes. Get back, lean back. Yeah. Big bikes, and they... Uh, they're just flying. It's crazy how much, like they're going faster than I am going now. And this is like probably 70 to 80 kilometers an hour. And they're going essentially near double that. It's pretty wild. That's the difference between winning the race and just participating. Obviously the average guy who races that also probably goes about this pace, but it's pretty crazy. This thing on flat gravel though, a little 140. But, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to hit those whoops at 140. Just playing catch up here. They're always just a little bit ahead. You can see them go through the sand corner here. This barbed wire fence off to my left always freaks me out a bit. If we make an error, you just get entangled in that so fast, you're so close to it. And this is all just like one cut. This is straight shot. From the parking lot, you just fly. And it's like a perimeter ride, which is essentially what we're on now, which loops around the whole property. And then throughout it, there's a lot of cross sections and that's where it gets more technical. But it's kind of fun to warm up in these wider open, faster sections. You get into the flow. Right here becomes like a mud pit during the summer. So there is like a little turnaround if you don't want to go through it. 
Anyone who watched the last video, thank you, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying these ones. They definitely keep me entertained during the winter off season to re-watch these ones and realize how much faster you go. It feels pretty fast in these videos. It feels fast in person, but sometimes you're like, man, could I go faster? Could I push it? But in this section here, like I'm, we're going pretty decently. Leaned right back over. Roots ever, uh, bike looks good though. I do like the green. It looks better in all this dead, like, fall grass where it's all dying and going in hibernation mode for winter. Alright, we're catching up, we're catching up. Gotta keep that power on, bounce over the whoops, don't let them slow you down. That's Brendan. Here we go, here we go. This sand, whoa, did you see that? This goes to like just a sand hill. Then we come in and you can either turn right or left. Right goes to like a super windy technical track. Left goes back out to the field perimeter loop, which does pass by like a semi off-road motocross track to loop on. You can see how open it all is here. It's a mix of plantation, perfectly lined up pine trees and then uh, this wide open prairie setup. Big sand track we just caught up to so you can see the return loop back. Yeah, we're flying now. This is pretty good. I'm enjoying this ride. Adam is way up ahead. Do you see him already around that corner off to the left of the screen there? There he is cutting across again, so we turn right and again follow that perimeter right. Just trying a bit of a shortcut through the field, but it doesn't help him out. The sand today is pretty damp, so it's actually got some good traction to it, some weight to it. Sometimes mid-August, like it is dusty dry. And you wouldn't even be able to ride this close to someone just because of the amount of sand that's there uh, blowing up in your face. It's pretty heavy. And this section here gets a little sketchy because there's a lot of overhanging branches in here. The track gets real close to the kind of edge of the forest. This is probably more natural plantation or natural trees so it's not as lined up perfectly curated roads. This is just like a natural deer trail which has been widened over time but the ridges are a little heavier than previous as well and we go back into that dirt shows what like proper trees actually makes a difference they probably keep the ground more moist and better suited for it instead of sucking it dry just to grow as tall as possible to be cut down one day yeah we'll catch it okay we're coming around there's gonna be a big sand hill here this never used to exist. It used to just be a big dirt hill. And then quads get to it and they chew it up. But the quads also keep the trails clear, so it's hard to complain too much. Yeah. Okay, here's the second sand hill. We we'll skip forward a little bit. This one's fun. It is just pure deep sand, so you're like pinning it in second here. Essentially going nowhere, but getting up that hill real fast. There's a few wider ones where it gets a little more technical, less ridden, a little tighter, and you drop down back onto it. You can see just if you lose a bit of speed, you are done for the ride. You can't get, get back going just because of that sand. This is one of our sections we're building. Um, so we try and keep the first section clean so no one can see where we're going. And then we just throttle it up. This is pretty vertical, like it's pretty steep. And then as you're developing the trails, it's, it's hard to line up which is the safe bet, which is the way to go. So you ride back down it, pull the back brake, and just pull the leaves out of place. There you go. I'm back. 
it down. So that's the secondary route where we also have been trying to build up a little steeper there. A little two-stroke, 200. It's so lightweight that if you put your weight on the back end, instant wheelie because it's got enough power to just kind of wrap around with the lightweightness of it. You put a 200-pound guy on the back and it just easily flips up to <laughs> Here he goes, falling into the tree. GoPro never makes it look as steep as it is, but it, trust me, it's steeper than it looks. There you go. We try not cut down any trees. Like our goal is to just keep it as natural as possible. Go around them. Yes, let's go. See, that's that's a good view. Oh, no. It's a steep little hill. Only dead ones we get rid of. Just to save us being stabbed like some of those crazy videos you see online. Two stroke. Let's go. And almost. No, oh, no way. Just got to get that body positioning better. That body positioning. You lean it back and there's just no weight to the bike. It just wants to tip over. I don't know what the wet weight is. It's probably about the same as the bike, like 225 pounds. So it's really easy to tip over. New section again. Oh, he hit a tree? No. Kind of looks like he did. Just jump up out of here. Alright, this is our new race section, so this is a bit further along. It's definitely up and down this valley edge, and it's fun to keep that pressure right on top of people. <laughs> Already getting chewed up by us. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh stalled it. No. This section is such a hard ride to a like super sandy area that it's hard to get up a lot of times. If you just aim it wrong once, the sand is just so cut in, it just goes hard to get up. It gets trapped. All right, let's see if we can catch him here. Go, go, go. There's a lot of off camber kind of jumps here, so it kind of sends you whichever which way you aim. It aim, it doesn't exactly go where you want. Depends on your speed, how hard you're throttling off the jump. Back end will bounce around. And then coming up this downhill here is so rough. Like just that brake bumps coming down. But there's a pressure on Almost over. And then it's into a hard ride where you just gotta pummel it out. Full throttle. Okay, we're catching him. We're gonna have him, I think. That 300's got some power. I think I can catch him. On any of those straights, it's like a 450. Hey, it's like a 450 and it just takes off on the straights. The 250 just doesn't have that crack to it. You kind of got to ride it high the entire time. Keep the power around the corners. We're getting him. We're going to catch him. We're going to catch him. Oh, we're catching him. Pressure's on. Oh, almost fell. A little soft corner. This type of racing is fun. It's not always about as top speed fast as you get. It's about how technical speed you can go. Can you keep your balance? Over the logs. Can you, how fast can you go, you know? Oh yeah, we got it. We got it. Gas on, gas on. Hard left, down a hill. Hard right, up a hill. Yeah, we got him. Way more speed. Oh. 
little sketchy. Get that pressure on. Okay, okay. Fast down the hill. That's always key. Go fast down the hill. And go. Oh. Oh. I touched him. Bumped his wheel. Stalled it. No. I thought I could just ram him out of the way. And... We're breaking, but it's not doing much. Here we go. Yeah, that wouldn't fail. All right, let's get out of here. Sun is setting. It's a cool evening. We've got our 100% kind of fleece lined gloves on, which work great for this weather. Just adds a little bit of insulation to the top of the hand so it doesn't get as cold. But as the sun sets, these uh, trails can get pretty dark pretty quick in certain sections. This is like an exit loop out. Head straight to the highway, but at the furthest point away. So you can either, depending how dark it ends up, ride the highway back or do another section of this back, which is what we ended up doing, just because the sun is still high enough in the sky. In this section, I actually lost my drone in once flew it out, the winds were super strong and it just died on the way back. Luckily, I was able to get it right on top of the trail and then it lost connection about 10 feet above the ground and it was in good condition, so I don't know if it self-landed and didn't have enough battery to send the signal or if it just dropped from 10 feet, but there was no damage. No damage whatsoever. I should try and find that footage. Maybe I'll slip it in at the end, just a bit of drone footage. It was a different day. There's the highway there, you can see the trucks. This section is getting faster and faster. Or I'm getting faster and faster. Either one. Hopefully you enjoy this kind of video. Remember to like and comment if you've made it this far. It does help the algorithm and it'll let me know whether you're actually interested in watching this. I think it's entertaining. I like watching it and it's good to rewatch in the future for my own stuff. And this section's fast. And then all of a sudden it'll hit like a hard left, hard right. And you gotta get back on the path. And all the corners are just super deep sand too. Which is kind of good depending on the day. Like today, really good. In the middle of August when it's dusty, dry sand, those just eat you up and slow you right down. Is on. Four strokes are louder than two. He knows I'm right there. Sometimes it's fun. Whoa! Sometimes it's fun just to put the pressure on people, see what they'll do. He's obviously pushing it a little bit harder. Maybe more than he wants. Alright guys, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, good luck out there, and uh, we'll see you at the next ride, this one's going to be over in about a minute now, so I'll see you out, and uh, if I find that drone footage, I'll add it right to the end of it. Have a good one guys, thanks for watching, bye.